Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to install a swirl flap delete kit on your BMW M57 diesel. This particular car I'm working with here today is a 2010 BMW 335D. This involves removing these swirl flaps and then installing custom blocker plates. As a warning, this is an off-road modification and it is not approved for vehicles licensed to be driven on the road. The reason for installing this kit is to remove the common reliability issue where the swirl flap can break and then end up in your engine, potentially causing damage. I am currently a partner with Turner Motorsport. They are a reputable BMW supplier that has been present in the BMW community for a number of years. With every sale from their website, using the link in the video description, I do get a bit of cutback to help keep my channel going. Links for the parts used in this video will be included in the video description. Before we get started, it's a good idea to disconnect the battery. This requires a 10mm wrench which I have already done. Remove the 6 8mm screws holding down the cabin filter cover. Then lift off the cabin filter cover. Unclip the sensor under the hood. For each of those covers, pull out the tabs on the sides and then remove the outer covers by the hood shocks. Here's a close up of removing that cover. Remove the two 8mm screws on each side of the windshield cowl. There will be one on each side. If you haven't already, unclip the wire that goes across the engine bay under that plastic trim piece above the engine cover. Lift up the plastic cover and then pull towards the front of the car. There will be a wire clip that also needs to be disconnected in order to fully remove this cover. Before going any further, it's always a good idea to vacuum up any debris which can potentially fall inside the engine. Using an E14 socket, remove the two bolts on each of these strut towers for the strut brace. Remove the plastic cover at the center of the windshield cowl, then loosen the E18 bolt here. There is no need to remove this bolt fully, as the strut braces have a slotted hole where they slide in under the bolt head. Then remove the strut brace for each side. Make note of their orientation as they only fit in one position. Remove the 13mm nut for the power wire that goes across the engine bay. As mentioned earlier, you should have disconnected the battery so there is no chance of a short here. Remove the 7 5mm socket head bolts using a 3H drive ratchet. This engine cover comes out in two pieces. I will show you that in a moment. Once those fasteners are out, wipe around the oil fill location, then remove the filler cap. Lift out the first part of the engine cover. Reinstall that oil fill cap. Remove the three 10 mm bolts holding on the center section plastic trim panel on the firewall. There are two styles of fasteners here. Make note of where they are located. If you haven't already, pull out that rubber gasket. Then lift out the cover. You may need to pull up the windshield cowl to help with the movement. Now remove the back section of the engine cover. This is a tight fit and will require some patience when removing. Make sure you don't damage the sound insulation. Remove the two 10mm bolts towards the back corner of the intake on the driver's side. There will be one on the engine oil dipstick bracket and another one for the other bracket on the rear. Disconnect the electrical plug for the MAP sensor. Simply press the tang and pull off. Disconnect the electrical connector on the rear of the intake. Then disconnect the other electrical connector below the MAP sensor. Using cutters, remove a cable tie holding on the wiring harness. Using a standard screwdriver, gently pry off the electrical connector on the butterfly flap motor. Disconnect the wiring harness from the bracket. Disconnect the electrical connector on the top of the assembly along with removing the harness from the wire retaining clip. Using a standard screwdriver, remove the gear clamp holding on the EGR pipe. Disconnect the electrical connector for the EGR valve. Remove the 10mm bolts using a 3H drive ratchet for the top intake runners. These bolts cannot be fully removed as they do snap into place on the intake. 
Now remove the 10 millimeter nuts on the lower intake runners. You will need a magnet to retrieve each of the nuts. Careful not to lose any. Disconnect the boost pipe going into the throttle plate and EGR assembly. Wiggle the intake back and forth to help break it free. Finally remove the intake. The old gaskets were removed using a standard screwdriver. This intake was soaked in my own homemade hot bath setup to remove the carbon buildup. This is a common issue on these engines. If you are seeking more information on how to do that, I do have a video for that, so be sure to check it out. Using a large standard screwdriver, unclip the actuator bar for the swirl flaps, then pull off the main lever from the actuator motor. To remove each of the swirl flaps, a Torx T20 driver is required here. The T20 is then required again to remove the actuator motor for the swirl flaps. The motor is also required to be removed in order to access the two torque screws on one of the swirl flaps. Then slide off the actuator assembly from the intake. Using a standard screwdriver, gently pry out each of those swirl flaps. Take your time as we are working with plastic, which can be easily damaged. As mentioned earlier, I did hot soak the intake for cleaning to remove any carbon buildup from the inside. Then it was pressure washed after. Each of the swirl flap holes are cleaned with paper towel to make sure there is no debris left behind which can damage the gasket. Each of the holes are then sprayed with a food safe silicone. This won't damage the o-rings for the caps. The lubricant is smeared around the holes with my finger to ensure there is even coverage. Now install the new swirl flap caps. These simply slide into place. After that is installing all the fasteners. Again, a T20 is required here. You can reuse your old fasteners. As mentioned earlier, these caps are only intended for off-road use only. Any remaining silicone spray is then cleaned off. The swirl flap actuator motor is then reinstalled. Then install the fasteners for the motor. The grooves are then cleaned for the intake gaskets and then new intake gaskets are installed. As mentioned earlier, these were supplied by Turner Motorsport. The link to these gaskets will be included in the video description. With every sale from using the links, I do get a bit of cutback which helps keep my channel going. The paper towel was removed from each of the intake runners and here I'm using my borescope from Tesselong to help inspect each of the intake runners. I'm making sure there are no objects which fell inside the engine and that most of the carbon buildup was removed. A link to this borescope will also be included in the video description. The sealing surfaces for the gaskets are also cleaned on the engine side. scotch Brite can be used on the side of the head. For the valve cover I just used a light degreaser with a clean cloth. The intake is then installed back onto the engine. Use a flashlight to make sure all the gaskets are properly in place and none have fell out. The fasteners are threaded in by hand first to ensure everything is properly in place. The 10mm intake bolt torque specifications are 7 foot pounds or 10 newton meters. The 11mm intake nuts between the intake runners are torqued to 11 foot pounds or 15 newton meters. After that is reconnecting the electrical connectors on the rear of the intake. Install the EGR pipe along with the gear clamp, then tighten. Plug in the connector for the EGR valve. Reinstall the electrical plug for the butterfly flat motor. Reinstall the other electrical connector and clip the wires into place. Finally snap in the boost pipe at the front of the assembly. Reconnect the wire going across the engine bay using a 13mm socket. Then follow up by installing the plastic protective cover. Plug in the wire for the MAP sensor. The brackets for the dipstick and at the rear of the intake are installed. 
electrical connectors here are also plugged back in too. Before finalizing everything, I reconnected the battery and started the car to ensure everything is working correctly. The rear section of engine cover is installed. The first two bolts for the engine cover are threaded in first. That cover under the cowl is installed along with the three 10mm fasteners. Remember, there are two different thread types here. The rubber gasket by the windshield cowl is pushed back into place. Install the front section of engine cover, remove the oil cap, then put the cover into place and reinstall that oil cap. Tighten down the fasteners for the cover. The large plastic windshield cowl is installed. Make sure you do pull those rubber tabs on the backside section, one on each side. Snap the power wire that goes across the engine bay back into place. Install both fasteners for each side of this cover. Clip the wire back on top of the windshield cowl. Reinstall the cabin filter assembly along with the fasteners. Reinstall the strut braces. Slide them in under the bolt by the windshield. Then fasten them into place at the strut towers. Which brace goes on top doesn't matter. Reinstall the plastic cap for the bolt hole by the windshield. Snap those plastic side covers back into place. After that, you are officially done. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me. And leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.